Hi, welcome to another edition of Antique Radio Archaeology. Today we're going to continue part two of the Westinghouse H204A AFM receiver. Now we've got a lot of ground to cover. We're going to go ahead and recap it. We're going to get the thing aligned. We're going to test it out. We're going to fix the power cord issue that we have with it and get her all back together and ready to go. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. I went ahead and uh, this is a nice little uh, set of capacitors that I picked up a couple of years ago from Sal's Capacitor Corner. And they have um, a nice little collection of capacitors in boxes like this so it kind of covers most of what you need so in this case I've got I need a couple of point zero zero ones are right here I need a point zero two I've got zero two twos that, that'll work a point zero five microfarad uh, point zero four seven will work for that so that's everything I need right here. What I'm going to have to do now, I'm just going to have to snip this off and use this as a
Okay, so one of the things that I like to do as I'm recapping is replace uh, replace three caps. I'm going to go ahead and fire this thing up. I know it worked before. Let's make sure it continues to work. So the question of the night stems from this. If you could change the ending of a movie, what movie would it be? It brings up a very... Yes, we have. Okay. Still working. I can continue recapping. Okay, so I replaced all the caps. Went ahead and shrunk down the heat shrink that I put in there. Um, I got everything kind of out of the way. Nothing's touching. Alright, so I have one more capacitor to replace and that's Actually, here. That's pretty much it. She said that don't confront me. So there you can see all the capacitors we replaced right here. And uh, of course we're going to leave the can up here. So I'm done with the electronics now. It's just a matter of cleaning this up a little bit. Uh, I'm going to clean out this switch here. And what I got for that... I got some lubricant here. I need to get it into that. Well, that's a lubricant. Um, it works great on pots. You just need to let it dry out after. It's going to need about five, six hours to dry out before I can fire it back up. So that should clean that up real nice. Little contacts here. Alright, I ran into a rather interesting situation here, and I want to go ahead and uh, kind of explain what's going on here. Uh, I had replaced the 250 microfarad capacitors in this, put them over here. Uh, but I couldn't figure out where this 50 microfarad capacitor came from. Come to find out, it's the same one as this one here. So I actually wound up putting those two in parallel. Well, in the process, I got to looking at this, and I'm like, what the heck is going on? Because this is a selenium rectifier. And when I looked at the schematic, uh, that diode shouldn't be there. <laughs> okay, so I've been educated a little bit on uh, why there was a diode in parallel with that selenium rectifier. As it turns out, this was an old... Uh, uh, technician's way of protecting the circuit and the selenium rectifier from burning up uh, by adding a diode. What happens is if the selenium rectifier begins to fail or fails, the diode will pick up the slack and uh, prevent that from happening. So uh, it really isn't something that was wrong with the circuit, but I'm going to go ahead and replace the, the whole thing anyway. It's just a, a a much safer alternative to use a diode and a resistor. So we're going to go ahead and proceed. So what has to happen is this diode needs to be put in series with a dropping resistor, uh, usually about 100 ohms or so. 
uh, pretty high wattage because they do get kind of warm. And what that's going to do is it's going to um, allow me to replace the selenium rectifier totally. And I need to get this out of circuit. Now I already went ahead and cut the stuff out. So that is coming out of circuit. That's going to stay. Uh, these two are attached to this diode. I've removed it from the selenium rectifier. This here has to go to the diode as well. And uh, I'll get that dropping resistor in there. But in the meantime, I need to remove this and put, uh, I'll probably put that dropping resistor in its place. But the reason why you want to get rid of selenium rectifiers has to do with the fact that um, they're kind of dangerous. Uh, not so much while they're working, because they're, they're, they're fine while they're working. They really are. But when they fail, and they, they do fail, and when they do, unfortunately, they give off a very obnoxious odor. And once you've smelt one, you'll never forget it. Um, the other issue is they can cause a fire. So you definitely do not want to have one of these things catch fire. So there we go. Alright, so I pulled out that selenium rectifier. Um, I don't need this capacitor anymore. I'm going to go ahead and cut that one out. So I've got this capacitor here. Turns out this here is a PTC205. That's about a thousand volt diode. However, I did order a new diode. I needed some anyway. So I picked up a IN4007, which is the same rating as that one. Exact same rating. But, you know, we're they're cheap. I'm going to go ahead and replace it. I also got a couple of dropping resistors. Uh, here's a 25 watt 50 ohm, 25 watt 100 ohm. Need to get this voltage down to probably about 110 volts. And right now I don't know what this thing's putting out. Uh, I need to check that real quick. But what I want to do before I do that is I want to go ahead and uh, kind of clean this up a little bit. I don't like the way this is wired. So I'm going to put these wires over to here. I'm going to go ahead and get my diode squared away and uh, get that soldered onto here. So we need to get this this thing put together. So what I just realized is after I put this in, I actually need three lugs. And I only got two because one of them's going to ground. So I need to. I went ahead and disconnected these already. I'm going to go ahead and pull this out. I'm going to replace this with a th one that has, well, four, well, three lugs actually. So, all right, one down. Put a heat sink on there. Okay. Anode here coming from this 47 ohm resistor. Be 
cathode going over to here, which will pass through a resistor. And then it'll get over here to the top of this cap and to this transformer. So, now, what I need to do This is the 100 ohm. And I'm going to measure at this pin here what the voltage is. I've got it all hooked up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to power this thing up. Now with this dropping resistor here, I should read between 110 and 120 volts which is what I want. Uh, without the dropping resistor, this probably reads about 150 volts. I don't need that. That's way too much. I need it to drop down. So let's go ahead and see where we're at. Turn that on. I've got the isolation transformer here. I plugged it in. Right. I'm going to read right here. It's 10. Okay, I'm reading right around 121 volts. That's Perfect. I think I'm going to leave the 100 volt. I was going to go with a, there's a 50 ohm and a 100 ohm. I think the 100 ohm is what I need here. So I got it all cleaned up. It's looking really good. All the grease is off of it. And, and uh, now what I want to do is I need to go ahead and get this dial made. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, this is cardstock. Just regular cardstock. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, create my little template here.
we go. Okay, the big thing is to make sure that this has a nice clear path. Alright. There you have it. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on the uh, alignments. Uh, first of all, we're going to do the AM alignment. And uh, this is pretty much all the test equipment I'm going to use. Typically all you really need is the RF signal generator. Uh, I've got a freak counter just for accuracy and I kind of like using a, um, a thousand hertz signal instead of the 400 built into the signal generator so I'm going to go ahead and do that for the uh, audio. But uh, really you need a signal generator and you need a vacuum tube voltmeter equivalent. So I got my 455k hertz, I'm coming into a 0.1 microfarad capacitor and I'm going to go ahead and tie to pin 1 on the first IF, right here, okay, there we go, the uh, ground is tied to chassis, and I am hooked to a isolation transformer just the radio is the test equipment is not Let's go ahead and turn it on the capacitor is fully open helps to be on AM now I'm going to adjust A1 and A2 for the best signal Okay, that's the first part. Okay, the next step is I'm going to go ahead and hook the antenna or the uh, RF generator to that stator right there. And I'm going to adjust A3 and A4, which are right here and here. So let's go ahead and fire this up. Okay, so for the next step I need to go ahead and adjust the signal generator for 1,615 kilocycles. Okay, now this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on a loop antenna. which I'm just going to lay next to the other antenna. And we're going to adjust A5, which is down here, for the best signal. Okay. Okay, now I need to adjust this for 1400 kilocycles. There we go. 
And same thing. Okay, now I need to tune this till I can hear the signal. And then I'm going to adjust A6. Right about there. Okay, that completes the AM alignment. Okay, so now we're going to do the FM alignment. Now before I get too far along, I wanted to point something out. There are three test points that I need to have access to. A, which is right there. B, which is right there. And C, which is right there. Now as you can see, this does not show a very good picture of where those test points are. So I looked on the schematic and unfortunately the schematic didn't show it either. However, uh, looking at the schematic for the 182, it does have those test points identified. So I went ahead and penciled in my test point A, which is right here off of pin 2 of tube 5. C is down here between these two 10K resistors, and B is down here on the top of that electrolytic right there. So I'm going to use those as my test points. So for the FM alignment we're using 10.7 megahertz, uh, which I've already got it set up for, and it's unmodulated, so I removed the modulation from the uh, from the RF generator. Okay, so I'm going to be injecting my signal over here onto pin 1 of the second IF tube. I'm going to take my reading off of pin 2 of this next tube right here, and my adjustment is actually that little screw right here. Okay, so I need to adjust for max deflection. Which is right about there. Okay. Okay, and I need to adjust this top screw here. For zero, if I can. There we go. Okay, so... I've moved this down to pin 1 on the first IF. I'm back on test point A. So now what I want to do is turn that on. And on the can on the top, I'm going to adjust A9 and A10. Alrighty, there's my max deflection. Okay, so now I need to put the signal generator on pin 7 of the 12AT7. So now I need to adjust A11 and A12 for max deflection. And there they are. Okay. Birmingham, pre and covered other 
United versus Birmingham Legion will begin right here on 99 at Everything on the chassis is complete. It's been aligned. It's been recapped. Uh, I've replaced the selenium rectifier with a dropping resistor and a diode. Uh, here's the filters. All the filter caps have been replaced out of that can. Um, pretty much all the wax capacitors have been replaced. And so electronically, that's pretty much everything I did. I did a complete alignment. So this thing's ready to go. So my next step is I'm going to go ahead and get this thing back on the chassis, and we need to get a power plug put on it. Now the issue with the power plug, it attaches here, and it sticks out like that, and when the door closes, it will plug that in. It will plug it in in the proper uh, orientation. Now, I'm missing a little square piece right here. And this is not the, the actual power cord that came with it. I do have an example. You can see it had this little square plate that kind of holds it all together. So I've got to fabricate something to correct that. And I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a groove in here. I don't want to go more than just a little bit because I don't want to reach the uh, electrical conductors. So I'm just going to cut into here that width. And just move a little bit of material. There's my two pieces right there. All right, so I measured out. This is the area I want to cut out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. Let's go ahead and there we go. Perfect. I'll blacken that out a little bit, but I need to drill a hole here and here. And that will plug in when the door closes. Perfect. So 
and then the other story, and I want to get your take on this because we haven't worked in a minute. Brian Harson, and I, it was an article that was written in Saturday Down South, and they were saying, you know what, if you want to help Auburn... from anybody but didn't do it it's gonna give him a call i'm gonna see your new cigar closet and i'm gonna raise you i don't know his belief yeah yeah uh, you're at 12 30 you have right in the 12 30 news and it was bleeding and it wouldn't stop. Wouldn't stop till 1.30 and then they finally were like, you gotta go to the emergency room. But how did the bosses know your nose was bleeding? Well, I couldn't run the board. Uh, I was trying. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please hit the like button. If you haven't already done so, please hit subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. In the meantime, happy restorations, everybody. Hope to see you again next video. Goodbye.